Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be painting A, something old school, and B, at a slightly different camera angle. I'm going to try painting while holding a baby. This might not be the best idea. You might hear him huffing and puffing in the background once in a while in his sleep. Anyway guys, I've not painted room work for ages. I just fancy doing something modern and trying out some contrast paints and seeing how quickly I can get these painted up. I'm going to start with Bear from Room Org, and we're going to start by doing his skin. I'm going to use Gulliman's Flesh to begin with. I'm going to be using Redgrass's Games Size 2 brush, a very generous brush which I think holds the contrast really really well. And I'm going to start with the skin because it's on the inside of this miniature. It's going to be the hardest to reach. So let's do it first so I can fix any mistakes afterwards very easily before I've painted up any of the other colours. I'm going to carefully apply this one, well hopefully one. Thick, I'm going to go for the thin coat on this. I don't want his skin to be too dark or too contrasty. I've cut a bit of his vest on this side unfortunately. I just thought that was his arm. I thought wrong. I'll have to touch that up in a little bit. I should mention I prime this using Rafe Bone Primer, City Dell's Contrast Primer. And they have a paint to match to do touch-ups as well. So I'll just fix that off camera in a moment. Exactly the same process on this side. Just a quick covering for his other arm. He's got some sort of wristlets going on, some bandages wrapped around his wrist to protect him, so I'm going to need to paint his hands coming out of the end of those carefully around this baseball bat because this, in the artwork at least, as always, I'm following along with the artwork and in the artwork his baseball bat's incredibly pale so I want to be careful with this skin colour on the back because it will be hard to cover over the top and that just leaves needing to do his face so we'll get some on his face, I'll probably paint the eyebrows in independently afterwards so I won't worry too much about those get some on his nose go right up to his beard but try not to get in his beard either because I don't know what colour I'm going to do his hair yet might be semi light and a smidge just on his hairline at the back he's also got a teeny tiny rip on his trousers so I may as well put some skin in there but we'll see if that stays or if I just painted the trouser colour the pants colour for you guys in the States with the skin all done and I've touched up any mistakes I made painting the skin, we're on to his overalls and I'm going to be using Militarum Green to do these as, as you know, it's just a bit of a military green really and I think that kind of suits the dungarees he's got on. And I'm just going to be applying this with the same brush. I'm going big or go home, just gets it done that much quicker. It really does hold the contrast paint well. So I'm going to move round old bear get this green into position this color is going on beautifully well his dungarees got lots and lots of folds in them contrast works really well with the textured areas so this is a great bit for the contrast in the artwork he's got a few bits that are darker than the rest such as his knee pads and his breast pocket and I think I'll just do two coats of this on there to give the same sort of darkness as you see in the artwork and it'll just make it a little bit more interesting than just a single coat all over this miniature of the same colour. One thing I'm noticing is painting with a baby is a lot harder than I thought. Kneeling on the floor while painting is a lot harder than I thought. So this might not be something I want to do going forwards but we'll see, we'll see. It just, it just reminded me so much of when I first started painting. I just uh, had my first child and that's kind of why I took up painting because it's a nice hobby you can do while just sitting up with the little ones making sure they're napping okay or waiting to take over do some feeds that sort of thing so yeah this is looking great so far as I mentioned I'm just going to pull it closer to my face and tidy up the top area and then probably add a second coat to these knee patches here and his uh, belly pouch as I mentioned I added an extra layer to these knee pads down here and this pocket in the middle so looking a little bit darker a little bit closer to that artwork for the next color we're going to use a pocket free a puff a puffer curry why nailed it first try i am going to downsize to my red grass games double a zero brush just because these bits are going to be smaller and i'm going to be painting these bandages what do you call these greaves is that on your legs i can't remember i wish i could remember things but my memory sucks but either way, these sort of white bandages on his on his forearms around here. I'm being quite generous on the these bandages as they look quite grey in the artwork. 
quite a, quite a stretch from the white that his vest is. So I'm being generous here, whereas on the vest I'm going to be a lot of thinner coats. I'm going to get this a lot closer to white. I really just want this to darken down the recesses. Just give this some depth. That's the white done. That was super quick. Let's go and let that dry. I'm going to use a splash of Griff Hound Orange for Bear's facial hair and his and his head hair. This is very dark orange. It's almost a brown. I think it matches the artwork pretty well and it'll be quite interesting. It'll complement that green. This is my first time ever using this colour. I have to say, ooh, I am a fan. This is a beautiful colour. Get under his chin as well, just for the added realism, just in case anybody picks it up. Remember, the face is a focal point, so people looking at your sweet ass painted miniatures may well actually look under his chin. Try and do his eyebrows carefully. If anybody's ever wondering if miniature painting is difficult to get into, I think the answer is no. No, it's not, guys. I started painting miniatures when I had my first child, and here I am painting them with the second one, this time holding him. As I do this, yeah, it might not be my best work, but it's getting paint on another grey miniature. Looking nice. Leave him to dry his hair. Put him under the old blower. See how that goes. For his shoes, I'm going to use Gore Grunter fur. And these are very, very straightforward, but I'm going to just be careful around the soles because they look a bit grey in the artwork. And I am a stickler for the artwork, so I'm going to leave those and paint those in properly. Normally, still don't know what you call not contrast painting. Classic, I'm going to pop them in classically. That's where we're going with that. Um, I'm just going to paint those in grey when I start adding some of the details. There's going to be a few pieces of detail work. His, his bat definitely needs some. I think, <laughs> excuse me, Jake. Um, his um, bat definitely needs some and his eyes will need painting in. And I think he's got a few things in his pockets on his dungarees. Now, I won't try and do them with contrast. We'll be painting those in properly. So yeah, the soles will do, do that too. But yeah, just a quick splash of this on his shoes. And that should, get that bit there. That should just about do his shoes. Let those dry. I'm gonna make this my last bit of contrast painting. Well, it is the last bit of contrast painting, I think. Well, I might do a little bit on his back, on the black part of his back. But while I'm not holding the baby, because I'd like to be a little bit more accurate on that. This is going to be Skeleton Horde. And as I mentioned, his bat's incredibly light. So I'm just going to be using this to add a splash to his bat. Now he's got a grip, which I'll be doing in some other colour. And he's, the top part of his bat up here is black. So I'm going to do that using Black Templar. But I want to not hold the baby to do that. So I can just not get it all over his hands, because black is dangerous. That's it. That's as simple as that on the pale part of his bat and I'll back yeah and I'll be back tomorrow without a baby to add some detail to this so that's the base coat completely done using the contrast so quick so easy but now we're going to move on to the details I'm not holding a baby so I'm going to get a lot closer and be able to control the brush a bit more so and I feel like painting the details in is what really makes contrast come alive I am going to actually start with just finishing these smaller work on the bat so let's get that in black and that is still using contrast paint but I wanted to make sure I got quite a sharp line where the top of the bat, which is black, meets the wood of the bat. There's actually nails in the top of this bat here. I'm not going to worry about them now, just I'm fine for them to be completely covered. That is some of the detailing work I'm going to come back to with some real paint, real paint, once this is dry. Oh, it's so much easier painting and not holding a baby. You guys out there don't know how lucky you are if you're not trying to wear your baby while painting tiny miniatures especially if he's kicky like mine and decides to dance around every time i try and do anything delicate there we go that's the black done i'll let that dry while the bat's drying i'm just going to start on some of the real painting this is using filthy suit by the army painter very watered down I'll do a couple of coats of this off camera but i'm going to be painting it on the soles of his shoes in the artwork looks like a fairly light gray so I'm just going to get a coat on here now, let this dry and add another coat until it's the consistency I want. But yeah, nice easy one to start with, the grey on his soles. The bear's baseball bat, I'm going to finish off the strap around it using Army Painter's Crusted Saw. It's a very 
maroony red, very deep red, and I think that complements the artwork well. I'm going to add some washes just to darken down the gaps between the straps momentarily, but yeah, just carefully applying this everywhere. I think the strap goes, I think the artwork and the miniature differ slightly here. In the artwork, it's, the strap stops above his hand, but I'm pretty certain the model's actually got the strap all the way down here. Again, thin, thin coat. Might have to do two, but I really want the, the gaps between each strap to show through when I apply a wash. Another quick detail there. Then I'm gonna be using a little bit of Army Painter's Leather Brown to paint in these straps that he's got on his wrists. So adding a little bit of detail, making them look a little bit more interesting. Again, thin coats. Probably take two. And it's very, 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 very small detail. I'm not gonna paint in all of the little strands that he's got on here. I think just, just the big belts. I think it's too small a detail for me to paint on the individual strands. I maybe I'll have a look when the camera's not in the way, just in case I can do it off camera, because it would add a little bit more interest to these bandages he's got around his arm. But yeah, just a little bit of a little bit of brown on those straps there. So I did have a crack at the extra brown bits off camera. I think it went okay. They're pretty difficult to see, but they do add a bit more interest to those bandages. And I, I went ahead and downsized my brush to the Sabre by Game Envy. It's a double zero as well as the Redgrass Games one that I'm using, which is just thinner. I mean, they all have different sizes. So a little bit of a little bit extra. I don't have a camera in the way, and you should be able to do that roughly. But yeah, I sort of made it up because it's not obvious on the model where those are. I've also just gone back and used that smaller double zero brush to add in a bit of rope, I think, using leather brown. And I've painted the base coat of his lighter there using that crusted saw as well. So keeping the same color palette, lowering the effort, you could have done that at the same time. I just uh, I wanted that smaller brush and to do it off camera, but letting you know these colors match and that's the same brown. Carrying on with the detail work now, we're gonna be adding some metallics. Gonna start with Army Painter's bright gold to add in these buckles he's got on his dungarees. Really jazzing up the model now. Put a bit too much paint on this particular buckle, wipe a little bit off. So it's gonna take a couple of coats, I think, to cover this dark green with this gold. But we'll get there. Uh, what else is there? I guess it's symmetrical, so there's the same on this side. Got this top buckle up here as well. It's actually got some buttons on his dungarees in the artwork, but I can't find them on the miniature somewhere down here, but I don't see them, so I'm not gonna do them. So yeah, I'll just finish those off, tidy them up and put them on both sides. Now, just off camera, I've added in some final details. I've gone for adding some silver in using Army Painter's machine gun metal. So I've got a little buckle here, one on this strap on his arm here, and then I've added in the nails of his baseball bat as well. I've also added in some eyes. Now in the artwork, there are no eyes, he's actually got them closed. So <laughs> for once I've ventured away from the artwork and it possibly made him look a little bit sort of surprised, but I just wanted eyes on it. I think it makes that face look so much more interesting, so much more detail. Don't forget how small this miniature is and the distance you'll be at. So although he does look quite surprised close up, it'll look quite a lot more interesting further away. And that I think just adds a much better detail to his face, makes all the contrast around his face look amazing in my opinion. As a, as with most of the details, it's making the contrast look a lot better. And don't forget how fast I've painted this. So next up, I'm just gonna add some washes to some of the, the real paint I've added. So I've got flesh wash and I'm gonna use flesh wash by the army painter and you know the, the clues in the name it's his flesh and i'm going to apply that to all of this metal now i think flesh wash works really really well on gold that's a little tip i gained from one of the one of our subscribers one of our patrons phil and i saw him doing it in something he shared and ever since i've been doing that and i much 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 prefer it to using any other of the washes on gold so flesh wash applied to all of these buckles at the top and then we'll let that dry and I will add any little details I want to pop back out back with that bright gold. So I'll carry on doing this. The only other wash I'm gonna add is Army Painter's Dark Tone, which is their black wash. 
And that's just to make some of the detail pop back out along his shoes. So I'm just paint between his shoes and his soles. Just get that black line back in. And other than that, I think the shoes are finished. So I'll go around here and add that line in there, just making the soles stand out a little bit more interestingly. Again, if you if you just painted it a little bit more carefully, you probably won't need this step because the contrast had done this for me. Maybe if I'd painted the soles before the contrast, I'd be not having to add this bit. And the other bit I'm going to do with this black wash is just carefully, if I can do this, on his straps and just make them pop out a little bit more against those robe wraps he's got on his wrists. So I'll just catch all the brown that I did on these straps and make that pop out. And this little bit here in between, like so, make it stand out that little bit more interesting. I'm just going to go and put a silver cap on his lighter as well. And that'll be that. Oh, I should do in between these wraps on his baseball bat grip as well. That'll make that pop out and look a lot more interesting, like so. The final piece of detail I wanted to add was some blood effect. What I've just got here is some Yoohoo glue and sort of just stuck it to it and dragged it down, adding some sort of gooey, drippy blood. And then using Army Painter's glistening blood, I'm just going to lightly cover that and start building up some blood on this baseball bat. It's depicted in the artwork and I think it'll just add a little bit of detail. I, I th always think a bit less is more with blood. I'm going to try and do it quite carefully and just add a splattering to the baseball bat except where these guts have got stuck to the nails in the bat. I think it's just an extra little bit of detail that's going to make this miniature a little bit more interesting than others. So this is really going to be down to personal taste this bit, not that the whole miniature isn't. But if you love blood, put as much on as you like. If you don't want any blood, don't add any. It's up to you guys. Let you judge how much you want. Then for my final bit of work, it's just taking care of this base. Now, I'm going to go to my default, just paint it quickly black because I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. You, oh, I think you always want to finish your base, even if it is just a quick black coat because it's going to make the miniature pop out and look so much better. Now, it's not going to win any competitions. Speaking of which, guys, if you don't know, we're currently running a zombie painting competition on our Patreon. So all Patreon members are welcome to submit an entry into that painting competition. There's a sweet trophy to be won, and there's actually a prize as well. You can borrow, borrow. You can win the wash wizard that I actually used in most of this video to hold those Citadel contrast paints and stop them spilling all over the place. So, guys, there's a video on the channel. Check that out if you're watching this in the current day as this video is produced. By all means, check that out. Please do come and enter. I'm very, very excited to see these entries. Some have already come in and it's amazing. So yeah, very, very cool. And if you're watching zombie side videos, you've got a whole game that's eligible to enter a zombie painting competition. And with that, that is bare completely finished. Now, it's not my best work. I will be the first to say that, but it was very, very quick. That was well under an hour. I've lost track of time and I was holding a baby. Guys, that is hard work. And I think that's good all things considering. If I can paint all of the game this quick, I'd be done in, you know, under a day of painting sort of thing, which would be would be great to have the whole game painted. Let me know in the comments below if you're still painting Zombie Side modern zombicide room morgue in particular with this one i know it's uh it's not the new hype so no maybe nobody needs any you know tutorials for this but i'd be quite happy trying to get that game painted up really quick i don't play anywhere near as much as the fantasy version so i'd be interested in contrast painting it and seeing where i could get with that and as i mentioned in the video there is a competition currently running on our patreon where it's a zombie painting theme and there's a sweet trophy for the winner do please check that out Patreon link in the description below and obviously it massively supports the channel. Thank you all ever so much for watching. I'll see you again next week.